It's another day, it's another day, it's another day. So, uh, let's get my cap on. So I'm actually live now. I want to give you guys a bit of a slight peek on what I do as the market opens. So I'm not going to say much. I'm just going to show you guys with a bit of how I kill my charts, you know. Obviously, I'm going to speak about your NASDAQ, you know. So what moves NASDAQ. And just one of the key things to look at, technically as well. And what to obviously just monitor in terms of the fundamentals, the key fundamentals around NASDAQ, you know. So I want to give you guys, that's, really, that's the reason I have my comments off so y'all can see the graph all out. So I'll tell you guys one thing that obviously moves NASDAQ is... Uh, just wipe this cam. Give me a second. Gotta wipe my back camera. So I want you to see. So this is my basically I can, this is my trading view. So my trading view, obviously I do all my lessons with my trading view, so my trading view as I come here. My majors, okay. I always look at what helps obviously tell um well not tell when, when Nasdaq is going. What helps with the uh positive movements of Nasdaq we are your S and P five hundred, obviously your Nasdaq, you know, just the, your naturally all your big investors, you know, and uh, your Amazon, Apple, and all of that. So I'm sure, obviously, if you guys do know what moves Nasdaq, you should know about what's going on. Let's get into the chart. So what happened with Nasdaq is that it's quite simple. So I'm gonna put the full landscape. I don't know y'all can see this shit. Hey, now you're gonna have to twist your head, but it's all right. This is my fifty minute chart. So I'll go into one hour, so y'all can really see what's been happening. So I'm gonna break down. What's actually been happening? This is actually a free, free breakdown of the macro. Y'all should appreciate this. It's a free breakdown of this chart. Um, so let me get into current price. This is my daily chart. Obviously, I can see that Nasdaq dropped a few days ago. I don't know about the second of just do that. I don't know about the second of February. Yeah, second, second, no, second of September. Sorry, second September. Nasdaq hit a, a very major drop there. Oh, we all know that Amazon. You know, uh, Apple and all our other major stocks also did kind of lose value. Our big investors like your Warren Buffett, Mark Zuckerberg, your Tesla, a lot of big investors obviously did actually lose a few billions in that. So if you lost money on this drop, you're not the only one, you know, all, all big gurus lost money, you know. So let's, let's, let's focus on basically what, what's, what's next. So what's next, what's next for NASDAQ? Let's, let's, I don't want to do this, man. So let's let's get into a, a more lenient time frame. Let's let's go to I'd say uh, roughly. Let's just jump onto one hour. So let's see what's actually what's been happening lately with Nasdaq. As I zoom out, I tell you that ever since the drop, so ever since the recent drop we've had with Nasdaq, which happened here, around about the second of September, we've been failing to come back. If your people have been saying, "No, we're going back up here." It dropped again. We're going back up here. It dropped it initially because when once stocks drop, see stocks are very different. So once shares and all investors pull out of a certain phase or something happens in the industry or in the market, it is easy. It's very easy for it to drop, but it's difficult for it to go back to normal. So um, price can fly up, but once it drops, it's very difficult for it to actually gain momentum, especially with phases of how Apple lost money and how Amazon also crashed, had a slight crash and things like that. So the big question is, what, what are we expecting for this? Because last week we said, no, we see NASDAQ obviously gaining its best momentum. It did kind of give us a very good, um, I would say, signal of like, no, we are going back up now because of this movement. You know, so this movement here, if you can see my, my, my cursor, this movement here was giving us that, uh, yeah, a leadership, we are pushing back up momentum, NASDAQ movement, then bam, NASDAQ drops, Okay. What you need to expect now with Nasdaq is that anything is possible. You know, anything is possible. Uh, but however, days are getting better. So I see the next two months of Nasdaq we will definitely be facing up as usual. Our buy, 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 our buyers will be as hot as possible. But for now, what's your goal on making money on Nasdaq? It's quite simple. So you don't want to be that guru guy and say, no, me, I'm going to take a buy and hold forever. Like what I'm going to say, but you need to always jump into zones of the graph that look tradable. So, Nasdaq is not in a zone where you can hold for fucking two weeks or a week. You know, you got to be in, in and out. You know, a day is good enough. Make your profit and kill it. It's even very difficult to trade Nasdaq on a one hour, four hour time frame right now at the moment because 
It's very volatile. It behaves like a nuthead, you know. One candle, uh, one moment, a candle can be literally, can be literally this long. Can you see? And then leaves the week. So you need to, at times, at the moment, I've been killing Nasdaq literally about 30 minutes in and out, 10 minutes in and out. A long start hold is about a good five, you know, a day possibly if it's really moving positively that day. But at the moment, things are really tough because of the coronavirus and the pandemic has really fucked up the industry. You know, investors are trying to come back in hard. Remember that Nasdaq is the most powerful move. There's no, there's nothing that pays better than Nasdaq. Obviously, we have our German 30, US 30, S&P 500 and all of that. But Nasdaq is the most relevant and good paying. You know, it's the highest creating millionaire um indency or whatever whatever you guys want to call it currency or in the industry at the moment it's really paying you know so let's let's focus on this one hour so let's say what, what are we looking at i would say so i want to go out and highlight my, our previous nasdaq remember the nasdaq is an all-out buy is an all-out buy chart so all it does is that in in its nature it's supposed to rise nasdaq rises but what are we facing right now is that nasdaq has been experiencing a bit of difficulties trying to actually Get back to his normal momentum. Get back to his normal momentum. So it's quite difficult for it to actually gain the strength in one. Remember the reason I have the comments off is so you all can actually see my whole chart clear and shit like that, you know? And things. Remember that whatever I'm saying, you don't have to take it in. Just take, you know, whatever you want to take and then learn whatever you want to learn. And that's just it. You know, nothing much. I'm just giving my bit of input. I am not the Forex Jesus. I'm not a founder of, of fucking Nasdaq. I'm not anything like that. I'm here just like you. Fucking killing it as usual, you know. So let's go. Um, in phases like these, where we're actually going through times like this with Nasdaq, you still want to make your money, but you want to deal with smaller time frames as much as you can, you know. Understand, okay, for the past few days or the past week or so, two weeks, Nasdaq has been dropping. So you need to understand we're on a kind of a major sell happening. You know, and we're sitting in a zone where it's refusing to go to go lower. However, it keeps creating new lows. You know, so there's a chance that we might see potential drop for the whole week. However, things can change and start pushing up. But what you need to do is be very skillful when it comes to Nasdaq. So, let's go to our 30 minutes chart. Let me show you how to actually kill this shit. I'm a technical, so I'm a full-on technical. I do follow up on fun, uh, of of our on our, our Nasdaq fundamentals initially because some of them can be quite powerful remember that even our half past three movement has not been as sharp as we used to it because of you know pandemic got on us you know and things like that so let's say change time frame so our 30 minutes my 30 minutes initially is just showing a drop that happened i think i think it was on thursday i'm not sure was it thursday 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 today is the 20th 19th thursday or friday i don't remember but this drop it was friday actually this drop actually happened you know so as you can look here us, the buyers, were killing this nice buy comfortably as it climbs, pushes up, comes back on 30 minutes. We fuck it up just like that. Even on 30 minutes, it's just a bit too long. So you want to go a bit down because it's quite too volatile. So this is a way I'm showing you how to trade Nasdaq during the pandemic. How I've been killing it, even when we ended the pandemic. But during tough times of Nasdaq, when Nasdaq is having a tough time giving its natural movement nature. Let me show you how we kill it. Let me show you how we still hospitalize it. You know, so what we do is it's quite simple. I'm gonna change time frame. Let, let's deal with five minute, for example. So you come with a five minute time frame. What you see is Nasdaq. So remember that. Okay, let's go to back to 15 minutes. Let me show you something. On 15 minutes, what Nasdaq has done is that on Friday it dropped, you know, drastically, just like that. After dropping, it started picking up. All you need to do is don't try be Jesus here. There's no Nasdaq. Don't fucking try be. I don't know. Jerusalem here of Nasdaq. All you have to do is just follow what this thing does, like. It goes down to go down with it goes up go up with it especially with time like this you know be more confident in your buys you know be very careful on yourselves but just be as conf like just follow follow whatever it does so all you're gonna do is i can tell 15 minutes nasdaq dropped on friday came back and then obviously gave us a low here low around this section instead of picking up previously before the market closed when it picked up it refused to respect its previous its previous low to give us a new high so it broke that low broke this low and gave us obviously a high there and push the bit up so if you, if you what well, i would say on 15 minutes and five minutes nasdaq has been pushing up basically late friday i say from half past five friday now yeah, run about this phase so let me just highlight that y'all need to know that you need to follow everything it does if you want to kill nasdaq follow it takes literally one small move with nasdaq a buy from this zone here and just do this move this thing here so nasdaq literally buying from here to run about this area here 
is good money. Already that's good money. This is fucking five minute time frame. So you need to be able to kill nothing. Let me show you. When the market closed from half past five on Friday, the market from then was pushing up after a drastic drop that happened, you know? It was pushing up. And when it's pushing up on five minutes, even five minutes wasn't able to give us our technical momentum, our ups and downs. So you go, you can tell it pushed up there. Stay came a bit down, you know, gave us a sort of a low zone run about that area here. And that would be obviously on this side. So it would give us a nice low respecting that area there. It pushed up again. Hit a buy right there. It pushes up again. Confidently in profit comes back. Gives you a low. This low becomes, obviously, this becomes a new low based on your previous high zone. Remember that with technical trading, it's always the same rule. Previous high becomes a new low. So always nothing, it doesn't work out like beyond, anything beyond that. So this obviously from this area here, this high. See this high? Once the, the market killed that low there, it pushes up, goes, breaks that high, comes back and respects it. Once it's, it's giving you a respect zone like this on five minutes, just so you're about to see something quite big. Be smart. Shift it to one minute. One minute is where actually now we kill movement. So let me just zoom out nicely. So with Nasdaq, you, to be a profitable trader with Nasdaq, you need to be able to kill it on every single time frame. So you can tell that after the market from this area here, from this area here, when the market started to push up, it pushed up comfortably. And when it was coming back, it left a very a high zone here, which is a low area on this side. So if I highlight that for you, that was the next buying area. So this high zone here was the previous low on the downtrend that it had just happened a few hours earlier on Friday. So this becomes the new high. The market comes, but pushes up nicely. It comes back and sits here. You can see it sits there comfortably, giving you a new low on the previous high. Take that buy confidently. It goes up. You're looking at the market. It goes up. And once it breaks that part here, it breaks that. You hold your buys. Put your stop loss. If not, I don't even put my stop loss. I hold my buys. Wait for it to come give me a new low on the previous high. Just like that. Gives me a new low on the previous high. I smash the buy again. It pushes up one more time. Once it pushes up, as you can see there, breaks the high. Once it breaks the high, wait for it to give you another low there. The low will always come on the previous high or on the inner low of the previous high. All my students know when I say inner low of the previous high, what it, what that is. Obviously, y'all need to still learn what the hell previous low, inner lows and shit like that. But if you're a trader, you can't understand what I'm saying. Remember, I've taken my buy from this zone. I take a buy here, take a second buy here. I'm not scared. Pushes beyond that zone, comes back in again. So Nasdaq has got a tendency of not just leaving a certain area at that same time. So it can actually try to consolidate and stay in the same zone, especially on one minute time frame. You know, five minutes sometimes does actually just ride it, but one minute does play around a lot because we're talking about a lot of candlesticks that are coming at the same time. So in, in 20 minutes, you have 20 candlesticks, so you can expect to actually stay around the same zone for quite a while before it can do anything. So from there, gives you a low, it breaks that low, breaks that low, obviously, I mean, breaks that high. It will always push up. No matter how much money it's giving you, it will come back. And you add your buys. It comes the, the next low becomes on the previous high. So the rule is that whenever the market is going up, the next low will be on your previous high. If not previous high, the inner, the in, the, we call it a, a, the inner high. You know of the previous low area. So inner high, inner high, is something like this. So when the market decides to drop. Sometimes it can drop as low as this area here or this area here. That is basically the the armpit, like, like the deeper side of it. So it's a. It's an inner high of the previous low. This is a low section, but it's got a higher side of it. That sometimes the market does push the, to that low, but it hardly happens with that case. Actually, we have that scenario right here. So the market decides again, just before it closed, it pushes up. So just before the market closed, it wasn't an uptrend. It pushes up, breaks that high. So once it breaks this high, I'm going to show you guys. There's more buys. It goes up. It refuses to go beyond. Refuse to go a bit up, it comes back in. Puts this trade a bit into a negative. You're still in deep in profits from these buys, these buys, and all the previous other buys there as well. You know, just remove that. Sorry, sorry. I, trading view. It pushes down. See, this push down is not as scary. As it pushes down, it goes to a section that I call an inner low. So it's a low, obviously. It's an inner low. So basically, this section is where the market decides now that it is, it is actually going to rest on the inner low, basically on the previous low section, just on the inside of it, the higher side of the low, previous low section. I call it the inner low section or inner high section initially because I didn't know how to describe that part, you know, when I was still teaching people, you know. So. Uh
Um, when Ash speaks about technical movements and resistance, we're speaking about something that's very powerful. See, even with this zone, right now with the market opening, we're waiting for one thing. I'm going to highlight this high. The market is still closed. I'm going to highlight this high. This is one minute. So I do this. So we expect one thing to happen. The market is currently sitting not on a low because it has a powerful low that we actually would have taken a buy from before the market closed. I wouldn't have taken a buy because I'm seeing something like when the market opens that the market actually closed on a, on a very high, on a nice high resistance right there. We might see a very comfortable gap that will open run about this area here or making a triple bottom and then we'll start pushing up. If not, we're seeing it do a keep push, a very strong gap to the upside that will break the gap should break this high here and then for about an hour till probably around 1 130 it should work on dropping to come resist on this previous high previous high section giving us a new low and then before 3 30 in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning we can be adding our buys around about 2 o'clock 2 30 3 o'clock we adding our buys and as usual as usual we, we kill our buy and sleep momentum so what only thing that you must always do with nasdaq is follow what it does don't try be some doctor here just follow what it does don't try to be some i don't know whatever you want to be follow movement this this is the easy, easiest way to make money follow movement it goes up comes down you buy it goes up comes down you buy follow the supported trend so you cannot sell on an uptrend it's very stupid to take your sales yet it's one minute literally one good buy here fund your account 1500 2000 rent Hit your bloody buy at this point. Once you hear your profit reaching around 2,000 rand, to your decision whether you're going to close or hold. If you close, you, your balance is 4,000 rand. Wait for the next buy entry. You fuck it up again. You got bigger margin. You got another five, five, ten thousand rand in profit. It pushes up in profit with you. You decide whether you're going to hold or close. Your profit is now your balance is around 10k. Hold or close. You take another buy there. You fuck it up. You push. What I do is that I hold. I'm a holder. But obviously, right now with Nasdaq misbehaving like this, I have I refuse to hold. I always make sure I go in as in and out as much as possible. That's just my input right now on NASDAQ. All I'm saying is that on NASDAQ, as skeptical as it is, avoid holding for days. Jump in, give it one hour, break it down, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, see market momentum, check direction, kill it. Follow it, just ride it. One minute, five minute, one minute, five minute, one minute, five minute. That's all. One minute, five minute. That's all it is. Nothing major. You know? So, um... Just, just that. I hope y'all can actually hear me or y'all can actually see. I might be a bit far. Some are saying it's blurry. I don't know. Is it, I don't know if it's blurry, man. I don't know. But I'm seeing it clear on my side. So, yeah. Um, other than that, I hope you guys really understand what I'm trying to say. There's not much I can say about Nasdaq, man. Remember that in order to tell the future movement, in order, it, remember that in order to tell your proper future movements, of Nasdaq, whether Nasdaq is really gonna start picking up, you gotta have to go look at your S and P 500, your your Apple, your Amazon. Whether are they also picking up value? Those are the big moves of the market, you know. Um, follow up on the on the major fundamentals on it, so you can actually tell. Okay, fine. Investors are coming back in. We are expecting a buy trade. We're expecting the market to crash very soon. You know, when the pandemic hit, a lot of people actually lost a lot of money. They're like, no, Nasdaq crashed. Nasdaq. Nasdaq. As I was driving to Cape Town when, when the drop happened, and we were expecting it because that was just a few days before our president was going to announce our lockdown, and already in the U.S., the people are already on lockdown, and the whole world was shutting down, and we saw the sell coming. So we pulled out of the trade and waited for it to give us a drop, and once it spiked down, we waited for a high, and we took the sell. You know, we picked up, I mean, we dropped with it. Even when it was picking up recently, those that actually bought on the, that overall low will tell you that, no, it was a movie millions made remember that if the crazy part is that if you had bought nasdaq during the pandemic if you bought nasdaq around about may yeah mid may end of april right now if you found your account five thousand rand and bought took five trades 0 0.01 with nasdaq right now you'd be selling sitting probably in a an average of about roughly 1.1 million in your account per trade so you'd be chilling on a, on a proper three, three, four million rand on profit if you just bought with just 5,000 rand and held for that long. 
when that buy actually started recovering on Nasdaq. So people don't actually look at that, but Nasdaq is a platform for money. You know, it's a platform for money. Like I said, even with my graph, you can tell. What are we expecting for this week? Um, uh, what are we expecting for this week? Uh, I'm not at home, so I can't really guys show you guys on, obviously, on my TV and, you know, and we just break it down for you. So um, all I can say is what are we expecting for Nasdaq this week? Uh, we'll have to see what it does. I'm seeing a pullback. So one hour saying to us, let's go back to one hour. And overall, let's try give, let's try search for what what are we expecting? What is the, the a big picture of Nasdaq? So Nasdaq recovery. If Nasdaq does go over this zone here, if we manage to break this zone, this previous low, right? If we manage to break that zone and completely shut out of it and go over this part here, right? Then we see Nasdaq definitely picking up going back to normal upside momentum but obviously that would mean that also s p and apple and amazon are now starting to pick up and warren what jeff jeff bezos and warren buffett and them are also quite happy and they're gonna start putting their money back in you know and things like that but if you see if nasdaq is refusing and it keeps consolidating around the same area you gotta use the same technique i showed you go down to small time frame one minute five minute 15 minutes break it down monitor the trend fuck it up no matter where, even if it's moving in one place, there's no way you're going to miss the trend if you're following every single turn. With Nasdaq, you've got to follow every single movement from the biggest time frame all the way till. A good 10k with just 3,000 rand that you funded. A good 10k. So you cannot tell me Nasdaq is not making money. You are just not seeing the right share. You know, you are not. You're, you're thinking you are trading currencies that you're gonna hold for 60, 66 days. You know. So this just how it is. That's my input on Nasdaq. Hope you guys are good. Yeah, we can. We can. We can see clearly, Chief. Please. Okay. Yeah, we can. Okay. Uh, okay, it's clear. Yeah, I hope you guys can actually see this. I hope you guys can see this. Uh, this is just my input. I don't ever do this. I don't ever do actually give such input on NASDAQ or any trading or whatever because I don't believe good knowledge is given for free. But this is one of my ways that I develop. Remember, with trading, it's all about being skillful and be able to change and and move with, with current prices. Things change. Like the, when the pandemic hit, people don't know what to do. How do we trade NASDAQ? And you always got to go into your technicals and study. Like, okay, fine. Um, now how I used to do it, the comfort of buying us had been a bit challenging. But we still have to make money. You still have to hit your goals. So you got to be challenges. As a trader, you must be flexible, especially as a technical trader.